Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we will be learning a really exciting and interesting topic and I bet you this will help you a lot. And the topic is binary search. Yes, today we will be learning a searching technique or rather an efficient searching technique. These are the content for the video. We will be taking a revision on linear search. Then we'll go down to binary search, the approaches in binary search and time complexity in binary search. So before moving towards the binary search, let's quickly revise about a searching technique we previously learned, that is linear search. Well, if you haven't heard this term or are hearing this term for the first time, don't worry, we have got you covered. We already have a linear search discussed in detailed video in our playlist. So before going through binary search, I suggest you to watch our linear search video first. But to give a brief outlook on linear search to revise, Linear search is a searching algorithm which is a straightforward algorithm which just compares every element in the array until it finds the key or the element to be found. Now this algorithm has a time complexity of O of n and we need to make it more efficient. It is the most primitive searching algorithm. And to make a more efficient algorithm and reducing the time complexity, we use binary search. Now let us understand what is binary search. Binary search is an algorithm where we search a sorted array by repeatedly dividing the search interval in half. Begin with an interval covering the whole array. If the value of the search key is less than the item in the middle of the interval, narrow the interval to the lower half. Otherwise, narrow it to the upper half. Repeatedly check until the value is found or the interval is empty. Now, this has to be noted that the array used in the searching algorithm has to be sorted. Well, this can be a little intimidating, but this is all in terms of theory in binary search. But let us understand this into more detail via code. Now, before going to the code, let us see how actually this algorithm is going to work. And then we'll code it later. Okay. So let us assume this is an array of eight elements, which has an uh, data as two, four, six, eight uh, data elements, uh, respectively. And then we have to search a key as four. Right, so we have a key as 4 and we have to find this element in this array. So we can see that this key is available at index 1. So let us see how we can search our key element in the array. So here three things are to be uh, kept in mind. That is the left pointer, right pointer and the mid pointer. So what are these pointers? Now we know that this algorithm is based on uh, divide and uh, get the answer. So we divide this array uh, until it is an uh, array of single size or with uh, till we that is till we get the key as an answer. So let us understand how these pointers will help us out uh, to get the key uh, that is to be found. So in the first iteration of the search operation let us, uh, we will take the left pointer as a first element of the array and the R pointer will be the last element of the array. So this is an default case where uh, we will be hard coding it as uh, L as the first element and R as the last element. Now, now we will be taking the midpoint of these two elements into consideration. So as we know the index numbers of these that is 0 and 7 and we also know that uh, the midpoint is calculated by L plus R by 2 so that gives us 0 plus 7 by 2 which is 3.5 but as an integer it will give us the answer as 3 so the midpoint is at index 3 so now this became the uh, midpoint for this array now as we know that the key is 4 so the algorithm will check whether the key is less than mid, uh, the middle element or greater than the middle element. If the key is greater than mid, uh, the middle element, then the L term will be reconsidered as mid plus 1. And in this case, as we can see, our key is 4 and it is less than the middle element. The R should be shifted to the right side, uh, the left side, sorry. So this is how it will happen. The R will be shifted to mid minus one instead of the last element. Now this whole array has gone now. It has divided, it's, the array itself has divided into two arrays where now the actual array which we will be working on is 
only these three elements and not the whole array right so now here again we will be checking the mid now we have three elements uh, to consider that is two four and six so we need uh, to get the element uh, that is the key to which is to be found so again we will be checking for the midpoint for these two so that is zero and two so zero plus two is uh, two by two which will become as one so the midpoint is one so again algorithm will give the value uh, one as mid now it will check whether the value for or the element at the mid is equal to uh, the key or is it greater or it is smaller if it is equal to the uh, mid element it will give out the answer that the element is present in the array and it is at the first index or if it is greater than uh, the mid element the sim simply l will be uh, considered as uh, reconsidered as mid plus 1 and if it is smaller than uh, smaller than the mid r will be reconsidered as uh, mid minus 1 so this will be happening till the element is found or uh, the l is smaller than equal to r so we can say that it will happen till l and equal uh, l and r equal because sometimes uh, the key there are uh, if we take an key which is not present in the array then the uh, the dividing process will be uh, up till uh, the size of the array is one but still it didn't get any key so we will be returning something as uh, a minus one right so we didn't get any key so the element does not exist and this is all in binary search we will be continuously dividing the uh, array into pieces until we get a uh, element in the array or simply we will return that uh, the key is not available in the array so now let us go to the code and see how could we actually code this and implement this algorithm so now let us start with the code so first things first so we have a structure of uh, general cpp code we have some libraries included and a main function so let us start with the iterative approach first for the binary search so first things that uh, that should be done is we should get an array so let me take some values in it we have these values in the array right. so after it we have to get the key which has to be found so let us first uh, take an element which is available in the array so we could find it then we need the size of the array so we know that the size of the array is five so we can do this but this is not a good approach to uh, go while coding so what we can do instead of this is size could be done as we could use a method called size of or operator called size of so simply size of ar this is the size of the whole array divided by the size of the one element right so this can be a of zero which will give us the size so if we print out size oops okay yeah so as you can see it is five right so this is a good approach to go uh, for the size right so we have the size we have the key and we have the array so further we need to make a function for function for binary search with a iterative approach so let's take that so integer binary search this will be the function and the things that we will be passing in the function 
uh, will be firstly the array itself then the left element which can be called as L then the right element and the size now as we know that binary search is an algorithm where we divide the array into pieces according to the key which we are searching for so left uh, that is the l and the r variables help us into dividing into it right so that is basically what left and the right or integer l or integer r would be doing for us they will be dividing the uh, array into pieces to get the key or the value uh, in the array so let us understand how so if we have an y loop or less than equal to r or that can be done equal to l so what is happening here exactly so if we have five elements right so two if five four six eight and ten suppose so here the left element would be this and then the right element would be this now we will be passing on the integer key which has to be found so this is something we need as well so here particularly we will be checking for the key right so first thing what we will be doing is we will get the midpoint so suppose midpoint which will be left plus right minus left followed by 2 this will be giving us the midpoint of the array so in this case it will be this right the index at the middle so if here if we check here it is this is the 0th index this is the 4th index so 0 plus 4 minus 0 which is 4 of course divide by 2 which is 2 so your midpoint will be 2 and the index is 2 so this will be the one point so it will after calculating the midpoint we need to find if the element of the midpoint at the or the element at the index of the midpoint is equal to the key then we will simply return the midpoint right now this condition hits when the middle element or the uh, element at the middle is equal to the key at that point of time we will simply return mid right so after that first let me tell what is the value of l and r right now so l is 0 and r is uh, size minus 1 which is equal to because of the indexing right so r is 4 so if the element which has to be found is 2 right so or let's assume the element which has to be found is 10 so 10 is greater than the element at the middle right so we could give it an condition as if the error of mid is smaller than the key then we will simply increment in the lower value or the left value right because we have to divide it divide the array into half right so we will simply divide it into half which is only elements with these two values and 
this dividing uh, segment or this dividing technique should be done with the help of mid. So we will simply divide it by rearranging the value of the lower value or the left value as mid plus 1. So now left value is this one. Sorry. Uh, will be this one which is mid was 2. So now it will be 3. So now the updated value of uh, the updated value of the left value will be 3. Right. And if else anything happens or the only one possibly thing could happen is that uh, error of mid is larger than the key, then here yeah, definitely one thing happens. So this does not need a condition. Right. So only one thing could happen. We have to change the value of R. So R should be mid minus 1. Because if the element which we are finding is 2, then this will be the mid for the first iteration in while loop. After getting into this condition, the R value will be changed to R, uh, the mid minus 1 which is 3 minus 1 which is 2. So the next array would be this only, right? Or the comparing array would be this. So this or these are the three conditions which has to be done while using this for loop. And this while loop uh, will be going on till r is greater than or equal to l, or l is smaller than or equal to r. Both things work, right? And after completing this, nothing happens, then the key is not available in the array. So we should just return minus 1. Right. So here we will be returning the mid and uh, here it will be moving on accordingly. So here if we have a function call. So now we will have an integer which will store the result. So binary search, we will have the array in search pin, then the left which is 0, then the right element which is size minus 1, then we have size which we do not require exactly. So we can just remove it and then we will pass on the key to the function right and uh, as we will be getting the value as minus one or the uh, element found at a particular uh, at a particular index so if result is equal to minus one right if, if this is true then you know or print out that the key is not available or uh, this isn't the thing right or simply see out the element is found at index mid or result actually and, and yes this will be the this is the code for the iterative approach so let us have a look at uh, output so if we have an element 69 so and if we run it it will simply give us the output as element found at index 2 so now one thing that i missed actually is the brackets here there actually are 
like this this was a mistake so yeah so this should be giving us the correct answer so as we get here 69 is at the second index now if we have an element or a key which is not present in the array suppose 100 it will simply give us the answer as the key is not available so if we run it yeah so the answer is the key is not available so this is the iterative approach where we have the so called two pointers which will be pointing the direction of how the array is going to be divided and according to the conditions we will get the answer and this is how the iterative approach of binary search works now let us understand the time complexity of the binary search but before going to it we need to understand that uh, binary search has two approaches that is the iterative approach and the recursive approach now we just saw the iterative approach of the binary search recursive approach is also similar like iterative approach just instead of the while loop we have an uh, function call with itself that is uh, that's how the recursion works and the thing to be noted in these both approaches is that the time complexities of both uh, both of these approaches is similar now let us discuss about the time complexity about uh, the binary search uh, as i told that the recursive approach and the iterative approach both have uh, similar time complexities so let us understand what is the time complexity about the binary search and how does it take us to an efficient algorithm or efficient code itself so as we know that the algorithm in its uh, it itself divides the arrays into two parts up uh, until we have one element remaining into the array so let us assume there are n elements in an array so the first iteration will have n elements in it further the second iteration will have n by 2 elements in the array then the third iteration will have the n by 4 which is n by 2 to the power 2 elements in the array further while dividing uh, the array into number of parts and accordingly uh, taking the key into consideration uh, at some point after k iterations the size of array will become 1 so let us assume that after k iterations the size of array becomes 1 so therefore from this we could assume that uh, n by 2 to the power k will be equal to 1 that is uh, n 2 to the power k will have 1 uh, as the size of the array so this takes us from n is equal to 2 to the power k now after taking log on both sides we could simply see a regular mathematical uh, equation as log n is equal to log uh, 2 to the power k to the base 2 so here we could see that the time complexity is coming out as log n which is far better than just o of n so therefore binary search is way more efficient than linear search as we know that uh, it has o of n which is far more inefficient right so hence the time complexity is uh, very efficient for the binary search and we should go for binary search every time so yeah and also this is for the both the approaches recursive approach and iterative approach but iterative approach is a more better way to uh, go uh, using the binary search rather than the recursive approach because they differ in space complexities where the space complexity for the uh, binary search in iterative uh, approach is o of 1 whereas the space complexity for the recursive approach is uh, log n which is due to the stack right uh, the stack formation of the uh, recursive approach so therefore uh, you could say that we should take an iterative approach in uh, the binary search and yes that is all for the binary search uh, algorithm thank you uh, hope you like the video